By sharing my approach, my hope is you'll be able to take away at least a couple of ideas to incorporate into your workbench design. The entire footprint of my wood shop is only about 10 feet by 15 feet, not even a one car garage, more like a one motorcycle garage. So the design of the small workbench had to be really space efficient, starting with the pull out joiner. The joiner rides on a two by solid pine shelf mounted on some really heavy duty drawer glides. These glides have locks so that when the shelf is fully extended, the joiner's on a solid and stable surface. I don't notice any vibration at all when using the joiner. Perhaps I just have a well-balanced joiner, but I like to think it's because it's a pretty solid pull-out shelf. The joiner is connected to the dust collection system integral to the workbench. I'll cover the dust collection system in more detail coming up soon. The router lift is inset into the top workbench surface. I'll just take it out here so you can see how the inset was cut. First, I cut the inner through hole with a jigsaw. Then to get the exact corner radius, I bought this one and a half inch diameter router bit, which matches the router lift corners. And so by just sticking on some temporary guide fences with some double-sided tape, I was able to create the shelf for the router lift to sit on without too much trouble. I used the blue painter's tape that you see here just to shim it up a little bit to make sure the height exactly matches the surface of the workbench. I'm really happy with this router lift. It's so nice to be able to raise the router completely above the surface of the table. It makes it super easy to change bits. Also, the ability to make quick and accurate fine adjustments to the depth on the fly is really pretty cool. These T-tracks are to hold the fence as well as any other router table accessories such as these feather guides. There's the ability to connect the dust collection system to the router fence as well as the router enclosure box here underneath the table is attached to the integrated dust collection system. This blast gate is attached to a simple dowel push-pull stick so that I don't have to climb under the table to open and close the dust collection system. And of course there's a basic on-off safety switch. I first tried cutting the T-Track joints myself but made a mess of it and decided it was well worth it to buy the T-Track 4-way joint here. Independent from the use of the router table, the T-Tracks can be used to clamp work pieces to the workbench. Here are a couple of examples. However, I find that I rarely use the T-Track for this and instead always just find myself using a simple hand clamp to hold down the workpiece to the edge of the workbench top. Workbench is designed with the 3 inch overhang specifically for this purpose. The workbench top is 36 inches by 66 inches and it's where I do pretty much everything in the wood shop because my shop is so small there's really just no other place. I use it as an assembly table or for glue ups, for sanding, for spraying on lacquer, pretty much everything. Here I'm cutting a full sheet of plywood on it. There are several benchtop tools that aren't necessarily built into the workbench, but that I use on top of the workbench and connect to the dust collection system, such as the planer, the bench sander, or the drill press. One of the primary uses of this workbench is an outfeed table for my table saw. My original intent was to cut some miter slots in the workbench top, but it's pretty easy to just slide my table saw back a couple of feet if I'm using the miter slots. And so far I haven't been able to bring myself to cut large grooves in my nice work surface, so I'm not sure I'm ever going to do it at this point. Earlier I showed how the dust collection system is attached to the joiner and the router table at the other end of the workbench. And at this end of the workbench there's a two and a half inch vacuum line attachment for any of the benchtop tools. And there's also this attachment for the table saw. I just temporarily detached it to move the saw back so we can see. All of these ductwork Ys are a little messy, but they normally sit behind the table saw and out of sight. All the lines converge and go into this low budget but pretty effective cyclone separator that normally sits underneath the table saw, and then through the side wall of the workbench into the shop vac. 
I really hate the sound of a shop vac, so I put it behind a cabinet door and then added some sound insulation to muffle the whine. This little device is an auto on off for the shop vac and it's an absolute must for this integrated dust collection system on the workbench. It'll automatically turn on the shop vac when a tool is powered on and then automatically turn off the shop vac so many seconds after the tool is powered off. The timing of the on delay and also the off delay are both programmable. I have two power strips on each end of the workbench. With one power strip set up to trigger the on off of the shop vac and the other one doesn't. So for example, if I'm using my planer attached to the dust collection system, then I plug it into the left power strip and the shop vac goes auto on and off with the planer. Or if I'm using a tool like my router that I don't have connected to the dust collection system, then I plug it into the right power strip, not activating the shop vac. There's a large section of the workbench that I haven't completed yet. Right now I'm just storing jigs and miscellaneous things down here. One thought I have is to design some sort of a mechanism to swing the bandsaw down and store it below the workbench when it's not in use. I don't know if that's going to work, so it's just a thought for now. It'd be great if you want to comment below, let me know of any ideas or suggestions you have of what I can do with this unfinished space. It'd be greatly appreciated. The frame of the workbench is all made from 2x4s. Even the corner posts are just two 2x4s laminated together. The plywood is all birch plywood, but not that good cabinet grade Baltic birch. Instead it's just the inexpensive stuff that I got at the local Home Depot. I made the plywood top one and a half inches thick by laminating two sheets of three quarter inch plywood. The main reason for this was the router lift insert. So I felt like just three quarter inch, it wouldn't be strong enough around the router. Also having the extra support around the T-track inserts is another reason. And at that point, rather than just do some local reinforcement, it just seemed easier to make the whole top surface one and a half inches thick. The facer boards around the top are birch and not at all necessary to the function of the workbench, but I just have this thing against exposed plywood edges and it was a fun project. Even the drawer fronts and the drawer boxes are all the same birch plywood. I finished it all with Danish oil, except for the top. I used linseed oil on the top because I was worried about the varnish in the Danish oil making it a little too slick of a work surface. And it's worked out pretty good. This workbench has gotten a lot of use over the last year and still in great shape. Hopefully this has helped stir some ideas for your workbench design. Thanks so much for watching.